Hey, this is a follow-up to a popular video that I posted some years ago about a cob oven that I built. I'm actually taking down the oven. Um, my plan was always to tear it down and rebuild it based on what I learned. And uh, I'm not going to rebuild it in this spot. We're actually changing the, this place and the, and the roof structure into a chicken coop. But uh, still, I wanted to document the process of tearing it down so that people could see what the inside looked like and, uh, you know, after it was built and also kind of what happened over a few years of use. So here you can see all of the layers. I've already taken off that metal uh, chimney that I built for the front. You can look at the other video to see what I'm talking about. And then there's the brick arch and above that or behind that is the uh, cob uh, dome that stores all of the heat essentially. And then there's insulation. There's that middle layer of insulation, which is kind of like a fluffier version of the cob mixture. It has like wood chips and other stuff in there to kind of make it light and fluffy. And that is a really thick layer that goes on top of the dome. And then finally, there's this other insulation layer that I added. You kind of can't have too much insulation. So I went further and added this perlite and porcelain slip mix. And that's what you see on the outside. And then the very outside is a hardened shell of lime plaster and some lime wash coats on top of that. Um, still need the roof structure, even though it's been coated with all of that stuff, but um, it all held up really well. Again, there's a roof over it, so there's no reason it shouldn't. Um, you can see in some spots like where it was really close to that chimney. I don't recall if this was from before I had the chimney or if this was a result of having the chimney here, but there were places where the insulation had to meet up with the chimney and the chimney got so hot that it kind of cracked in those spots. So that was one thing that wasn't ideal is the, um, the kind of the mating between the steel chimney and the insulation. There's, there's probably a better strategy for how I did it, but that chimney was an afterthought. And um, again, it all still held together, so it wasn't too bad. Here you can see I'm pointing out the uh, middle layer of insulation. You can see how fluffy it is. It's really dried out at this point, and that's working perfectly. And then this is the actual cob dome. And then here's the outer layer, which is crumbly, but that's how it was when it went in. You can see there's a gap between the two, presumably where that middle layer of insulation just shrunk down when it wasn't wet anymore, but that's not a problem. Here is the, um, it's kind of like fireplace mortar stuff that I bought and used to adhere the uh, steel chimney to the brick. And that worked really well and is really strong still. So here again, there's a gap between the two layers of insulation, but that's not a problem because air is an insulator too. So uh, this space is not an issue at all. One place where there is a gap between layers that is a problem is this, um, what you're seeing here. And if you remember from the first video, essentially I uh, had made the original dome of cob and then it starts to crack. You can see the cracks here. And so I thought, well, I needed to make this thicker partly because the mix that I had was never quite right. So it, I think it really just didn't have the right mixture of clay and sand. I could have added straw as well. Uh, all those things might have helped, but what I had to do at that point was just add more of that thermal mass on top of the dome. So, but you can see it never really adhered despite the fact that I kind of made these crisscross hatches to, to try and get it to stick better. So in some spots, there's like a noticeable gap and other spots, uh, here you can see there is a, a gap between the two, but in other spots it kind of they kind of stayed together pretty well. They really would have to act as one mass, I think, if it was going to work properly. The heat really just wants to live in that thermal mass and not um, not have a gap between the two layers. Here is uh, again the the way that I tried to scratch it up and add some texture, but you can see here they're really just two separate layers. Here's a place where the layers kind of did mate pretty well. I think it's just, you know, a product of where it was maybe, or maybe I was able to put more force on it. Who knows? But uh, you can see it's, it's really not too much different than the cracks that are in, in the original dome. So it probably added some benefit here. I have some pictures of the inside of the dome, but they look just like they did uh, always. This was not a mystery. We can see that there are cracks, but now we can actually see that the cracks did go all the way through the layer. We kind of knew that anyway, because when I fired it in the beginning, uh, I was starting to see the steam coming out of those cracks on the outside. So that's why I added the second dome. Here's uh, after removing the fire bricks, you can see uh, the sand underneath them and then the thermal mass is under that. Here's a picture of the insulation, the interior insulation um, or that middle layer. And you can see it's not even dark, like it's, it's totally untouched by heat. That was one of the questions that I had and I think other people had was like, what happens to that mass in the middle? 
uh, when the dome gets really hot and transfers heat to it, does it burn up? Uh, even if it did, if it totally dried up and turned to powder, which is kind of what it did, you can see on the right it's really powdery, that's okay. If it totally disintegrated somehow, it would still be okay because essentially there's this trapped air layer in between that's acting as insulation. Here's a place where the insulation did actually burn, and I think that was right up against the um, the chimney maybe. But even then, like I said, it doesn't matter as long as, uh, I guess as long as there wasn't like a fire <laughs> from it. Um, here is in the middle the that big round insulation, uh, sorry, uh, thermal mass, and that's kind of sitting there as I would expect it to. Nothing's really changed. And then all of the bottles, half bottles that um, acted as a ring of insulation around that thermal mass to keep all the heat in. Those, uh, there were questions there, like once the thermal mass gets really hot and transfers heat maybe uh, to those bottles, even though they're surrounded by insulation, could they get hot enough that they would crack? Which again, wouldn't be a problem unless it, unless it compromised the structure of the whole thing but none of them cracked. Uh, even if they did crack, it, would, it still kind of would have this uh, air pocket in there, which is again insulation, so it would work fine even if they had broken. But here you can see they're all perfectly fine. And the bottles that go under that thermal mass, the question always was if they uh, are subject to heat and all the pressure of the dome on top, would they break? And um, that could compromise the structure, I guess, but none of those broke. Uh, these are all pretty strong wine bottles anyway, but um, you can see here, even taking them out, everything's just kind of sitting where it sits. Um, all the ins all the uh, materials mostly are just stuff that can go back into the ground. Um, the bottles are all still recyclable. Not the not the half bottles. I haven't figured out what to do with those. But otherwise, all the materials kind of um, can just be reused again. The stuff in the upper left there, the foundation, those will get buried in the ground to help protect from predators with our chicken coop. And... Um, Overall, you know, I kind of used as much reused materials and salvage stuff as I could, except for the fire bricks, and that's where I'm ending up, is just kind of a bunch of materials that can be reused again, and the fire bricks are sitting off to the side and will uh, be used for some other project at some point. So hopefully uh, seeing the inside here gives you some sense of what happens based on the decisions that I made and maybe can influence uh, however you make your uh, cob oven probably I'll look back at this next time I make an oven just to remember some of what happened and um, try and plan around those things. So hopefully this is helpful. Good luck.